So today, uh, uh, Master Vinci will give the first lecture, a kind of overview of the theory, uh, a historic overview of the theory, followed by, by a similar recall by, uh, by Sherban. But from tomorrow onwards, I think it is going to be switched with Sarban going first and Masavichi going second. And one more change, which is from, from tomorrow onwards, all your breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything would be not in this makeshift arrangement of today, but it will be in the uh, lounge on the second floor of the guest house on the, at the opposite end from the elevator so if you if you go to go to go to go up or down the elevator and walk to the other end you will the last room on the left you will see a big lounge so i am very honored to be here to present a uh, uh, series of lectures and uh, today's talk is about uh, how this, uh, the main theme of this uh, uh, workshop uh, it, uh, formed into the one chapter of mathematics, uh, which covers uh, this in the 60, now uh, from 1960 through 2000. Uh, say the, the paper, the last paper was 2001, uh, or the, if you include more of, of the uh, bit of extension, that will be 2000, a <coughs> uh, uh, little before 2010. And uh, my career as a research mathematician started in 1958, so uh, it covers most of my other research car career. Okay. Uh, as you know, that the uh, field of operation algebra was started by John von Neumann, 1929, uh, by uh, the fundamental theorem, by commutant theorem of uh, John von Neumann. But he did not begin the systematic study of operator algebra until 1936. Okay, and. Uh, the, with the collaboration of uh, François Marais, uh, the, the last, uh, their last paper appeared in 1943, uh, except that one appeared in the, uh, in the uh, 45 or 6, uh, that's a reduction theory. It uh, uh, followed a request from um, uh, the Frederick Mountain about the reduction theory. Uh, okay, if you... Uh, no, the, the ingenuity of John von Neumann. What is this nine, uh, the, uh, the seven years lap between 29 and 36? The, that then, okay, the operator algebra started out of a heavy influence of the uh, emanator and the outin and the doors. Uh, this, uh, success in the theory of a simple algebra. And Wedderburn theorem was among main theorem there. And John von Neumann thought that the Wedderburn theorem also holds in the uh, operator algebras. But it wasn't that uh, well, which means every factor is of type one. Of course it wasn't. And, uh, yeah, when uh, Maury arrived in the Princeton, John von Neumann uh, the gave as a research project to prove this is with a one theorem four factor. And uh, he, uh, the Francois was unable to prove it for good reason. And uh, Professor Neumann, uh, this is, doesn't seem to me that the case the, uh, the with a one theorem doesn't hold in general. And then von Neumann woke up right away. He recognized his mistake, and then a series of uh, paper rings of operators. Well, first one was not the one, but uh, two, uh, well, we call it first uh, uh, rings of operator one, two, three, four. 
fourth paper appears in 43. It was already in the middle of World War II. And it's amazing that the World War II didn't throw them down. And uh, during that period, nobody else followed up the Murray and von Neumann theory. But the infinite dimensional analysis is a far-reaching field for the most of mathematicians at that time. And the people didn't know even the, uh, the, well, the, 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 they are still busy digesting the theory of Banach. The Banach space, it's that the infinite dimension is still a nightmare, possibly today still. And um, it's uh, until the end of World War II when John von Neumann was already busy with uh, science in the war, the well, Manhattan Project. And then the friend, well, actually, if you look at during that, uh, the soon after World War II, the operator of algebra becomes a fashion. But the, the, the root was very small if you look at the, who are the uh, main people in the field. That was uh, the Dix Mayer and uh, Goldman, Drabarier, and uh, well, the Chicago School of uh, the, uh, the, the, the Seagull the Irving Kaplansky and so forth. So there's roughly keep, keep saying Chicago and the Paris. And in the 43, and the Gelfand Neimark worked on the norm of algebra, but did not really continue that one particular Gelfand wasn't. Gelfand proved the famous Gelfand theorem of the representation of commutative Banach algebra, etc. But uh, the, so the base for the operators were very narrow during that period. And uh, so and the, when it comes uh, around the 55, the, that the fashion is gone. That the operator algebra become hard uh, for the beginners. And uh, the people start to leave the area. And, um, uh, ironically, the need to, for the operator algebra started in the late 50 and the beginning of the 60. And uh, with mathematical physicists, uh, in the, uh, read by Rudolf Haag and Daniel Castro and Hans Borges and uh, Nico Hugen was and Ruel Erdos and uh, Fujihiro Araki was the engine you know, of uh, that, that group. And it was 1964, the Fujihiro proved the most of operator algebra coming in theoretical physics is of type three. And that was uh, uh, almost like atomic bone on the operator algebra, because operator algebra thought that the deep theory of Murray von Neumann on the factor of type 2 one is the tool to uh, attack the uh, uh, mathematical physics. But the uh, the Araki disproved that, that every almost all factors coming from physics type 3. What is type 3? Okay, if you look at the Mar von Murray von Neumann's approach, type 3 means graveyard for mathematics, or, or the mathematics of that time. Okay. <coughs> and uh, von Neumann factor, uh, means the, this is the uh, m prime is the algebra of all operators commuting with m and the self joint. Then the Murray and the von Neumann, what they did is that uh, they introduced the following, the, the E and F projection of m and the, the he u in m u star u equal to e, u u star is dominated f, f. And then they, uh, 
we are able to construct called a trace such that uh, E <coughs> this is then uh, extended just like measure extend from the set to the function so uh, the, uh, the linear functional over M so okay this is the measure okay type 3 means I, uh, the <coughs> for all non-zero, for uh, for Neumann and the Murray, this means that uh, you you can construct a major space so that major is either plus infinity or zero. That there's such a major space exists, such as say if you divide a real line by rationals, okay, then you have a space. And then if this, uh, the set uh, uh, is countable, it's zero, and the rest is plus infinity. And the mathematics doesn't take place on that major space, right? Uh, the, if the, the major, major is either plus infinity or zero, then uh, no mathematics there. Only set theory can do something. So, type 3 means tau, tau of x star x is either plus infinity or x equal to 0. So, and it uh, indeed for the type 3 up until the Tomita uh, Sack theory came in, even this simple fact remains the question. So the re uh, what Araki proved in 64 is that reality in mathematical physics is the one you have to do mathematics in that wild world, okay? <laughs> that was quite broad, and uh, Sakai proved in the 59, M1, M2 is type three. If either M1 or M2 is type three. So, Type three word is really great, but if you make a tensor product, it's type three or gone. The, the, the where you cannot go further. Okay. And indeed, sixty there was a quite a number of mathematical physics that came into the uh, game. Uh, uh, quite a few uh, friends of mine, I would say. Derek Robinson and the Marinus winning, etc. I can't name all of them. And around the, in the 60s, the mathematical physicists uh, uh, definitely led the uh, operator algebra. So, for example, Araki was already something like that. And the both powers. prove that there exist continuously many non-isomorphic factor of type 3. So type 3 words, once again, very wild. It's, it's a lot of them. Okay, that's about uh, that's 67. And then uh, that same into one factor is MacDuff, MacDuff, and Sakai. That was in uh, 60, well, end of 68, yeah, 68, and uh, published in 69, 68, 69. 
Okay. But uh, there was a historic uh, uh, gathering in, uh, took place in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in the United States. The very first international conference bringing all, all played algebraists and the mathematical physicists. That was 67. Uh, 67, 67 the Baton Rouge uh, and the Louisiana. There, okay, but uh, well, the powers gave, of course, talk on that this uh, sen sensational result, and all other talks are given. But uh, since actually, history is very ironic. The uh, two papers presented to the participant, not presented at the talk, was the, uh, the uh, paper of uh, Tomita and uh, Hag, Hugenholtz, and Winnick. Okay, those two papers circulated, the preprint was circulated, but they were not presented at all. At all. And the people start whispering about uh, their work. And there's a very close uh, similarity between Tomita's work, uh, particularly uh, uh, the, uh, the strange uh, But uh, Tomita's paper, uh, the preprint was very poorly written. And uh, nobody understood. Even the organizer, the Jack Dixmere and the Cardison, tried to understand what the Tomita did. And um, I contacted the Dixmere uh, after I confirmed that she uh, uh, admitted that she could not go beyond the page three. Because that uh, uh, actually full of nonsense. And the Tomita had a very poor record in his uh, uh, published work. There was uh, the inaccurate claim. So that is a good lesson for you, everybody. To, to, you should, if you establish the, that reputation, very hard to wipe it out. Okay, and the Tomita's paper was treated very poorly. Oh, that's a, another garbage uh, uh, given by Tomita. Uh, his, uh, the his, uh, compared to the history. The what? You mean the reduction theory? A reduction theory for the non-separable non case. Sure. And indeed, uh, that uh, the, uh, Tomita's work was disproved a very uh, definite way by the, my actually friend, uh, the Joe Taylor, the, in the, the uh, mid-60. Uh, at any rate, but this, because of this, uh, Hag, well, on the other hand, Hag Hugenholtz had a very high respect among mathematical physicists. They are the leaders of the field. They are the creator of the, the, the operator algebra based uh, uh, quantum physics. And uh, uh, apparently, uh, Hugenholtz asked uh, Araki, she knew who would be the uh, good person to ask. And uh, Araki the said, pointed out my name. He gave, gave, apparently gave my name to uh, the Nico Hugenholz. And the Ni Nico and the winning, uh, they are both from Groningen, Holland, no, Netherlands, and they came to me asking, Takesaki, uh, how do you think of it? I didn't, I, I didn't have uh, the preprint, uh, so and, uh, she, they uh, rented me, and uh, please give us your opinion about the Tomita's work. Uh, well, <laughs> it's very easy to point out the um, errors. Uh, from page one through the... So uh, you don't need uh, five minutes to say that this is wrong statement, that statement is wrong, etc. On the other hand, um, well, I was also that desperate. Type three, we have to do something about it. And uh, 
it, uh, it had a, a brilliant idea, suddenly. What is it that uh, Tomida pointed out that uh, the adjoint operation is preclosed under the Hilbert space constructed by phase polynomial states. That, that statement itself is uh, true. And the polar decomposition is possible. OK, that was the, uh, was the true, uh, the, the, the true statement. And you don't need to spend hours to confirm it. Just very three lines is enough. <laughs> Maybe you will say, <laughs> this, uh, someone will talk about it as a very fast hour. OK, so on the other hand, my, it was uh, for my very first experience in English environment, so that I was uh, unable to communicate smoothly, and I returned to Japan with uh, a preprint given by, uh, to me from uh, uh, Hugenholz, and I promised them, well, I'll check carefully after my returning to Japan, and I did. And if we we'll change the point of view that to, uh, from negate his paper, but to this rescue his paper, you need that 180 uh, degree change of attitude. Otherwise, it's, uh, you don't need it to dismiss in uh, five minutes. So uh, I started to, uh, to try to save the lemmas or the proposition, the definition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, I, uh, I was managed, I, uh, able to manage that, uh, to the conclusion. And I wrote to Dick Smear uh, uh, in June. Then, as I said, the, he said I, he couldn't go through the beyond type uh, page three. Okay, and then that was then the sixty-eight. <coughs> the uh, I spent the. Academic year 68 through 69 at the University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. It's, uh, well, that was a mecca for operator algebra. That uh, Cardison, Sakai, Michael Fell, and Bob Powers, Ed Efros, and uh, they share, and uh, who else there? Uh, and uh, Arlen Sturman, Barry uh, Bowden joined me also. Oh, Pukansky, Ross Pukansky. So that was the, 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 that's a dreamland for polarizable. So I, I was there. And uh, w upon my arrival, I said uh, to many people, the, the, no, Tomita's work is not true. The, 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 uh, Griffin, Ernst Griffin worked so hard he was unable to go to the end, and uh, it's not true. And then I said, well, that's a pity. That I, I write it down that uh, my own account, and then I could give it to you, and I start working on the fall of 68. And, uh, I wrote down all in detail. And in the January, okay, let's go run the seminar on the uh, Tomida's work uh, based on my notes. But uh, because the, the, this, uh, the conclusion is so important that you give only the introductory talk and uh, present the notes, then you should sit in the, uh, the last line, and uh, we will examine what you have done on it. That's and uh, Ed Efros, Powers, Mike. It was a seminar which Michael Fell never fall in sleep. Uh, Fell was uh, very famous for the, his uh, uh, tendency to fall in sleep in, during the uh, old colloquium talk, seminar talk. Uh, but uh, he was awake 
through all this uh, seminar checking. So it just started from January, ended in May. Okay, the May in the end of academic activity at the university, East Coast University. And, and it uh, went through that inspection. And uh, they asked me, why don't you write it down in the reduction of series? And that's the uh, terminal theory of modular but algebra to the uh, Springer series number 128. Okay. The, so the 69, okay, the, the, the paper, uh, paper was uh, the pub, I think appearance in uh, maybe the 70. 1970, <coughs> but uh, the, among the small circle, it was the Tomita's work established. And then uh, what happened was that Tomita did not recognize that importance that Delta to the ITM, he simply managed uh, to claim Uh, okay, that's a module. Of, this is the main subject of what uh, this sermon is talking. And then this one, phi is a faithful state. Okay. Then uh, there, the, uh, how to catch this, um, uh, today it's called the modular automorphism, is this uh, HHW, the Hugenhoff Hag winning, uh, the Hag Hugenhoff winning, the, um, uh, the modular condition is the one to uh, characterize modular automorphism. That was a uh, sixth. Seven. And then uh, I gave the uh, actually official lecture at the UCLA. That's 69 to 70 at the UCLA about this, as well as McDuff discovery of continuum <coughs> to one factors there. And the audience, among audience, was Henry Dye and uh, <coughs> Martin Walter. Uh, then Colin Sutherland, Richard Herman, who is now, uh, well, once the head of uh, University of Illinois. Uh, and, okay, let's see. Uh, when is my end of my, <laughs> that, uh, this morning, so? 11, okay, so we have another hour, okay, that's good. Okay, and that was the story in the beginning story of the TT theory. But at the same time, this 69 or 68 uh, through 70 was my personal, the, the, quite a uh, traumatic uh, two years for me, the personally. The reason, I was uh, associate professor at the Tohoku University in Sendai. Uh, and if you look at the history of the university, uh, internationally, this period coincided with student movement all over the world. Well, China's case is extreme, there's a Red Guard movement. And the United States, that the uh, anti-Vietnam wars. And the Europe, France. the, uh, the <laughs> democracy in campus, that the France, uh, it's particularly in France. And then French uh, had uh, some way to handle it, okay, that calmed them down. And Japan uh, student movement, well, I did not really uh, oppose them, uh, but uh, uh, on the other hand, it, uh, I oppose the destruction. <laughs> uh, the, the government was so stubborn to negotiate with the student. 
and the student movement, because they did not produce any positive result, the movement become more and more violent and uh, deteriorate morally and uh, ended up it's a really crime, criminal act actually. They killing, start killing them uh, among themselves, for instance. The, so the, uh, and okay, that could exactly coincide with uh, my uh, kind of a highlight of my career. And uh, should we return to uh, Japan? Well, U.S. is also quite a, the, the turbulent, uh, but uh, not that extreme. Well, certainly there was a uh, um, tragedy in the Colum uh, what, uh, Columbus, Ohio, the shoot by the state guard that uh, some of the students were killed. But you say, like, well, it is turmoil, it's turmoil, but it's uh, still under control. So. I questioned myself either go back to Sendai, Japan, and then faced with that st the violent student movement. Or, uh, but associate professor is powerless. Okay. <laughs> and so it's clear to me that if I return to Japan, my mathematical career will be gone. So, okay, so, I did, so the, uh, the after hard thought of uh, the one year, I decided well, to stay in the United States. And uh, the people, a friend of mine at the, at the UCLA, welcomed me that, okay, why, if you don't uh, want to go back to Japan, we, are, we love to have you here. And, uh, offer your professorship instead of associate professorship. And so I stayed there. And so that's the story, side story of the, the DT zero in this period. And the 71 spring, well, actually, uh, this around uh, this few years, in uh, Opera was so lucky, so many, many that uh, good coincidence occurred during that period. And uh, I don't expect, I don't think it is a, re a real to repeat that kind of a co coincidence again. In the 71, UCLA has host, uh, the hosted uh, the Opera Algebra special one quarter program. Okay, uh, and uh, that's UCLA. The people gathered there is Hogg, Cardison, Castro, uh, Hugenholt, and uh, get uh, well. Peterson as a young um, participant. Those other people stayed whole quarter. And among the participants at uh, the whole, whole quarter there were Martin Walter and uh, of course uh, my former student Colin Sutherland was among them. And the people who came in and out for a short period, it include Jim Glim, that's a superstar at that time, and also the, the, at the uh, Ring Rose, yes, John Ring Rose, uh, who, well, oh yeah, even the seagull came. Of in Seagull. Uh, and uh, okay. And then, so. When did S come to UCLA? What? When did F Rose come to UCLA? When did F Rose come to UCLA? Uh, Ed was not among them. Ed was, uh, <laughs> well, Carlson uh, came here there to UCLA. Ed was a senior person who took care of Pennsylvania at that time. 
Ed joined UCLA, F. Roth came to UCLA with 79. To AD was a visitor, from AD on the regular faculty. Okay, but <laughs> well, well, I, I, I might talk about that later. But in any case, okay. Then, so, the, uh, in a way, the, uh, from 70, uh, well, with success of the uh, Tommy the Tax Secretary, this, uh, once again, operator becomes uh, upbeat. Okay, type three was untouchable before, but it is now that we can uh, do that. And uh, this, for example, this is a tiny corollary. Uh, if you look at the whole story, it's a tiny corollary. And uh, okay, and uh, this is something the mathematical physicist is very much interested in, namely that the time evolution, the state of equilibrium, and the characterization was um, a modular condition. That's the, for instance, uh, that's the significance of the uh, modular automorphism for mathematical physicists. And then comes the summer of 71. That's the Turning point, uh, well, turning point was actually this the 78, 79 time, but it uh, further ac uh, acceleration or the proof of the upbeat of the field. That's the, the uh, Seattle, Patel, Seattle is, is, is uh, Institute. Uh, Seattle, Washington, to Washington. Washington State, not a PC. Uh, there was a, a three week uh, summer school in uh, statistics or mathematical physics. Okay, that are uh, the organizer of the Ramford and the uh, Ruel and the Lebo, uh, Le uh, Joel Lebovitz were the three were the in charge of running that summer school. But no, uh, the big name of this one is the around Con uh, was the as a participant, as a student. And uh, he came to that Battel Seattle for honeymoon with Danny. And uh, he was not, uh, he did not decide his uh, the PhD uh, research problem. Uh, uh, problem. And, uh, he visited his brother in uh, Princeton, and then he took a train to the, across the Canada to come to the Seattle. And uh, that on the train, well, in the Princeton, he grabbed my lecture notes. He around uh, told me that the reason to, uh, was that the Mojiro Hilbert Algebra, that, that's the title. He was just curious about what he pulled out and then uh, bought that uh, uh, lecture note. And then it was Alan who, who was able to cons uh, the absorb the material during his three-day train ride from the East Coast to the West Coast. <laughs> and uh, when I uh, spoke on, uh, I gave uh, 10 lectures at the Battelle, and everybody complained about the difficulties, uh, the overwhelming the, the detailed, uh, the hard analysis going on. Alan said, no, it's not that difficult. It's very natural. <laughs> That's uh, that what uh, he claimed there. Yeah. And uh, also another uh, historic uh, coincidence, uh, she was sitting on the bump in Canada, the National Park, the bump, the Rockies, that the very sunny summer day, and uh, he was uh, the reading then. Then 
Chuck Akama from, uh, I think she was already in Santa Barbara at that time, looked at uh, Alan Cohen, uh, the reading my lecture notes on a bench. Oh, here's uh, somebody who's interested in operator algebra. Oh, so you are the mathematician. And then he was started the chat, and he mentioned I'm going to, to the theater to participate in summer school. And, uh, Oh, they say, what you have is this uh, main, one of the main uh, theme of this conference. And uh, the, uh, Alan didn't know that uh, what he was reading was that the main, main topic of this uh, summer school he was participating. So it was Chuck who pointed out to him. And then he said, OK, let's read it. And he came to Seattle. Uh, and the very first day, when I started the uh, lecture, and I d gave the definition for the modular condition, I was, at that time, that, uh, that was called the KMS condition. Then, as soon as I uh, finished that, the definition, Alan raised the case, uh, hand. Well, I didn't know him. He was sitting some uh, in the left-hand side row, back row. And uh, 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 Professor Takita, do you need to assume that function is bounded? And uh, I said to him, uh, the, and he answered, yes, it is, it's uh, better to assume a boundedness uh, for safety for the rest of the argument. Then he said, you must. That's what he mentioned. Oh, the idea, I know that that, uh, that there was a question. Uh, that when I wrote the uh, uh, lecture note, I deliberately left that boundedness question open. Right? So that it's not, not clear bound, bounded function, function is bounded or not, the analytic function. So, so I recognize uh, that, uh, my gosh, this uh, <laughs> young fellow already noticed something which I back of my mind. So I barely passed his test. Uh, that, and uh, she knew that then, yeah, it's, you, um, you must otherwise count example. OK, that was my first encounter with Alan. Then, well, that summer school was so nice, and uh, another young uh, uh, mathematical professor, uh, Beth Raskai, who is you now the Texas a and you know, the, was a very young, uh, active young uh, lady mathematician, mathematical physicist. For the, every weekend, she went up to the, uh, the uh, Rockies with uh, rope. You know, <laughs> and uh, I suck. It's, 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 it's the professional, uh, almost professional, the mountain climbers. Oh, so, uh, all atmosphere is so nice and relaxed. And uh, Alan uh, thought that would be the interesting field to work on his uh, thesis. And uh, he, uh, this, upon his return to Paris, he went to the, the Dixmail, I want to write a thesis on no operator algebras. And uh, Dixmail did not, uh, uh, was not pleased with it. Uh, she thought that the alarm was too, be, too good to be operator algebra. Well, in France, operator algebra is very unpopular at that time. And I learned later from uh, Dixmail's former student, uh, Dramayer, he said Dick Smith never claimed operator algebra as his main field. It is. Yes. And uh, I was surprised. What? Then he said, if you do, if he did, he wouldn't be in Paris. He would be still in Bordeaux or <laughs> Grenoble or something, not in Paris. But. Alain was in the Choquet. Yeah, yeah, then because he, well, he, he was such a broad mathematician, and he 
even without operators, she has enough credit for the regroup representation, particularly an important group is this type. Okay. Uh, so the alarm go in, went into the operator algebra against supervised uh, uh, well and then uh, that was the 71 and the, the 4 of 71 he started to define it's today called S of M invariant Okay, it was, uh, today it's not that significant anymore, but at that time it was quite significant, and uh, etc. Et okay, that's 71 and through 72. Okay, and uh, Gabe Peterson was among the participants of the uh, workshop operator at UCLA, and he was also the Vatel. And the, we, I, uh, the, the, in the fall of the 70, I spent a quarter in Tulane. I lectured on duality on the, uh, well, today it's a Katz algebra. As of that time, the Katz algebra was not really the mature enough. Uh, and the theory of weights, which uh, he is going to, uh, Sermon is going to present. The theory of the weights as still uh, imperfect. So I, I know that the need for the theory of weights. So I worked with uh, Gert to complete or to advance the theory of weights and become more comfortable for operator algebra. So it's not just unbounded functions, it's more solid base. And, uh, then, 72, there's a very important discovery or, or progress done by Arveson, Bill Arveson, which uh, I'm going to talk about Bill Arveson's spectrum, it's introduced. And that, uh, okay, influenced on me, as well as the, the Alain Kohn, okay. And Alain Kohn, uh, the Arveson spectrum uh, it was uh, well for him modular automorphism is not that in, uh, for the um, his uh, main interest but uh, the Borchers theorem is uh, Borchers claim uh, proved the following very important theorem if the Hamiltonian is non-negative and uh, normalize the, your von Neumann algebra. Then the uh, one parameter automorphism generated by Hamiltonian is in a one parameter automorphism. That means for the mass physicist, energy operator is a limit of local observable. So that's the, the, the result. And the, uh, Arveson was very much uh, impressed by the Borchers theorem. However, the proof of Borchers theorem was, was given using, based on the sakai cadison theorem on derivation, which claims every derivation of the marriage is inner. Okay. The, the, Sakai uh, Kaisen theorem was a deep theorem and the operator algebra is very well appreciated. At the same time, critics says it's a, a derivation is a bounded and uh, when in reality there's no bounded to the Hamiltonian or anything, so this is a useless theorem. But Borges took a different way. She used the, the, the Kaisen, uh, the Sakai Kaisen theorem the way and the proving that the very basic theorem in mathematical physics. But derivation theorem is proven based on compactness of a certain set in the operator space. So that means that the proof is not constructive. So you cannot apply actually to actually pin down the, uh, this generator. You don't know, that some way exists. It's, uh, 
So the Arbson was not satisfied with Borchardt theorem. He wanted to have constructive theorem, uh, the proof. And he succeeded. And to do that, he needed the analysis of a spe uh, Arbson spectrum. OK. And OK. He was, at a, uh, he was a student of Henry Dye, my colleague, and, uh, okay, and also the Berkeley. You see him in Berkeley, just a uh, two hours flight. So he came down to UCLA to present his uh, fantastic uh, theory of a spectrum at UCLA in 1972, very early spring, the, the April. The, his theory was uh, so beautiful. Oh no, that's, that's, that's a beautiful theory. Why should I, should I apply this theory to the module of the Western? And I did. And uh, in uh, May of 72, the, I was able to prove that the sum of type three factors is constructed from type two one plus uh, endomorphism. And the Araki was also did the same thing. Okay. And that collided in a uh, meeting in Texas, Austin, the, for the uh, lecture of the George Mackey about the virtual group. And uh, that uh, Jim Woods was there from Kingston. And Araki was there in uh, Kingston. And uh, as soon as uh, Jim recognized that uh, m uh, the Fujihiro and myself are doing almost the same thing, why don't you come to spend the whole summer in uh, Kingston? And uh, we, I just uh, agreed to join, and then 72 summer. And uh, then the type three structure analysis really uh, took off at the uh, Kingston. And uh, Alan continued to work on that, his uh, work on the, uh, say, cone spectrum. I'm going to talk on that one later. And here's then a very interesting uh, uh, suggestion and decision. It's very different from American or Japanese uh, approach. Alan has had, had uh, so much interesting result, definitely ready to get the PhD. Yeah. But the experience uh, so differently. Oh, my, my student alone was doing such an excellent work. It seems this is going to be major thesis. He suggested to Alain, why don't you postpone the PhD to another year and uh, complete your theory using this one year. And uh, Alain's uh, agreed to postpone his thesis another year. And that the, his thesis appeared in 73, uh, completed in 73. And thanks to the Dixie's advice and the decision of Alain, that the paper still has a life. It's a still shiny paper, 50 years, well, how many years by now? 73, well, almost 50, for, for, well, over 40 years. And it's, no, it's nothing old. It still uh, has a life. And so, <coughs> And the 70, uh, at the same time, uh, around the, the fall of 70, I proved the so-called Takesaki duality theorem on the cross product and that took care of the, all the structure analysis. Well, first round, it's not the whole entire thing. First round that is claiming type three factor is a cross product uh, of type two infinity for normal zero by one parameter automorphism, which scales straight down. But uh, uh, the, I was, uh, of course, by, by that time, the, 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 around myself, the communicating through the tel well, no email that time, all the, the uh, hard copy correspondence. Uh, and um, 
So I suggested Alan to spend the one, at least one or two. Years. We have Hedrick's assistant professorship at UCLA. He agreed to apply for. And uh, okay, so that's the beginning uh, of the uh, fall quarter of 72. Then Daniel Castro visited uh, Pennsylvania during, uh, in the fall, in the uh, October or so. He telephoned from the, uh, Philadelphia to me, asking, why don't you uh, come to Marseille uh, the next year, spend a year? I said, oh no, that Daniel, that I have a commitment with uh, Alan, and Alan is com coming, uh, promised me to apply for the uh, Hedrix, and uh, so I have also the uh, students uh, whom I have um, uh, responsible. And, uh, and then Daniel said, why, let me take care of all of them. Why are you and Alan and uh, your student come to Marseille? Okay, then uh, if I stay at the UCLA and the alarm comes, I have teaching uh, duty and uh, so forth. But if I join the, the myself, I'm completely 100% free, no, nothing, just uh, work with alarm. And also my uh, thesis student and uh, throne and the car. So, okay, if you guarantee that uh, you, you will uh, finance my students, and uh, me and Alan, fine, I'll, uh, I'll go. And uh, then uh, Guggenheim uh, also supported me to stay there. And uh, so and that's the 72, end of 72. And instead of one year at UCLA, well, two years at UCLA, Alan came one month in the spring of 73. And uh, we worked together. And uh, that was the so that's the, or the uh, start of the joint work on the flow of weight. Of course, the title was not decided at that time. I, the only thing we know is that the majority alone is not the end of the story. That's a, instead, that is the beginning of the story of the structure analysis. That's the, so we uh, refined and so worked hard, etc. Okay, the, and the 73. And I went to, the, uh, to Marseille, and the seven, summer of 73, the follow meeting in the, now this time in the Europe. Okay, 73 summer was, uh, one was uh, Como Lake, uh, the Fermi Summer School on the Varena, it's, a, it's a July. And the uh, August, the summer school, Scandinavian summer school on Operator Algebra, where the Ufe Hagarap came in, he recognized that he had a brilliant young uh, the guy from uh, Denmark. That's the Scandinavian summer school in 73. And then uh, also the, uh, what, uh, uh, Bielefeld uh, had uh, also another workshop. It's, 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 it's some very busy summer. And uh, my colleague, oh my God, I said, uh, you guys, that, uh, he said, oh, oh, just like uh, the circus that uh, <laughs> moving around. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, okay, 73, 4, uh, we work together, and the title of flow weight came into our mind at a very short period. We were spending <coughs> a week at the Newcastle upon time, both at Alan and myself. At actually, it was born flow weight's name at the bar in the hotel. And uh, well, the, we started to puzzle what should be the title. The, at that time, already relative competence theorem is already done. It's, it's, so the, it's now the time for the title. And then that title came into that the title was decided at the uh, uh, New, New, Newcastle the hotel bar at the floor way. And, um, when he mentioned to his friend, uh, mentioned to his friend, Flo de Poir, 
Well, that means the weight on the shoulder of a postman. <laughs> so it's a very mean title. <laughs> but uh, that was a uh, 73. Um, and uh, so 73, 74. And uh, the flow of weight. Well, as written, and uh, well, no, not written. That's uh, all content was given. It's uh, well over 100 pages paper, so I it needed uh, for me uh, one another year to complete writing it down. So that the paper was written by myself. Okay, uh, then France has a fantastic system. Aran uh, had to. So uh, as a French citizen, he had to fulfill that uh, military obligation. But uh, there was the alternative for that. That's the uh, country which France considered as an underdeveloped country, or a developing country. You can go there instead. And uh, Jim was and Alain managed to convince French authority, Canada, Kingston is the, the developing <laughs> country. <laughs> and uh, Aram was uh, uh, charged to go to the Kingston as a French man. French man. And instead of shooting enemy, he shot it all the big, uh, big problem in the phonemological uh, so the inject. Uh, so that's the uh, 73, 74, no, no, 74, 75. And uh, along station in uh, Kingston, and the uh, winter is too cold to do anything outdoors. He just attacked his problem. And uh, in the spring of 75, at the time that uh, I was about to finish the writing up, he came to UCLA to discuss the final touch on the flow of weight. And uh, then, uh, well, uh, so that's the activity that they were, uh, Jim was managed to uh, host the, the uh, Colin Sutherland and uh, Wai Mi Ching, the Chinese operator algebraist, the Chinese Canadian operator algebraist, and uh, so forth. But they had a uh, very uh, clever move, and uh, they, they said, okay, let's to have con shift means we should be ready to respond to the alarm whenever he need to talk to but don't ask him any question let him be alone to concentrate his mind so but uh, Alain is such a person that whenever he has a dis discovery, he cannot keep inside. He had to talk to the, uh, somebody. So uh, that means the corn shift perfectly worked for Alain. And uh, she had a fantastic about the four or five the major, major uh, papers during that period in the Kingston. Now, oh, an uh, appearance of the spread on the latter half of the 70s, but all done in the uh, spring of 70, by spring of 75. And at the time of um, uh, completion of his stay in, in the Kingston, they went to the soccer, Aram broke his leg. Oh, no, no, arm, excuse me. His, uh, Aram broke his arm. He was unable to write it. He had a paper written by his wife, Dani. He dictated uh, Dani to write down his injective factor. <laughs> of course, <laughs> it's not on the official record, but that says uh, the, the, well, the paper written by mathematician's wife. And uh, OK. Then, uh, so seven, so seventy-five. 
Then, uh, okay, 75 and 76 was the, uh, the uh, bill felt, let's say, the uh, Centrum for Interdisciplinary Fortune. Um, it has a, a workshop in no operator algebra and uh, mathematical physics. I joined them, and uh, Jürgen uh, Florek was among very young participants. She was such a charming person. She finally uh, succeeded to <laughs> run a seminar, which I'm a main speaker on the TT theory, and also that. Uh, uh, investigating what Alan did, that's what they, at the uh, uh, safe. And the flow, that was the very first occasion of acquaintance with uh, Jürgen von uh, Florek. And uh, since then, Florek kept sending in the preprint. At that time, archive was not uh, the issue. Uh, his file grow and grow and grow and grow, uh, like that. Uh, in any case, that was. Uh, 70, uh, 75, 76. Oh, yes. And uh, 75, 76, uh, I was lucky that the witness that uh, Voronovich was among participants. And I think during all that time, she was already struggling on the uh, quantum group. But uh, the Time was not ripe for him, unfortunately. Well, or well, well, fortunately, I don't know. He, or the, she, when she uh, presented a talk, the, the nobody understood what she wanted to say. And, uh, but retrospectively, it was quantum group. But uh, the, uh, the concept of quantum group was not much enough for him to present in the crispy form. So it's a very vague, and uh, did not, he did not su uh, uh, succeed to convince the people about the value of a quantum group. It took him another 10 years to come to the reality of a quantum group. And today it's called the uh, Voronovich countdown group, right? And uh, that's the uh, but uh, so it's uh, uh, that uh, very interesting for me to observe how the mathematical idea developed from just a germ to the well-developed, quant nice quantized uh, uh, article. That's the developer known with the quantum group. And uh, also, the, uh, the sum of 77, the, uh, I have written uh, the what happened in the sum of 77 among my people in the newsletter of Schrodinger, Schrodinger Institute of Vienna. That uh, in that uh, there was when I spoke to the director of the institute, uh, uh, Klaus Schmidt, that uh, well before the Schrodinger Institute, that the Austrian are uh, hosting the informal research activities in the small village called Elma Tirol, Elma. Uh, the, that's the organizer was uh, the Daniel Castro, and I have to say that his uh, uh, Austrian wife, and uh, she had a property in Elma, inherited from her, her you know, ancestors, and there, uh, the Daniel's friend, the, the, the main theme of that gathering was the duality. So, Nobuhiko uh, Tatsuma also joined uh, there, and myself, Alan, and said, Okay, duality is the one thing, but uh, that's the summer when that, uh, the non commutative geometry was about to born. 
of the um, cone. The, the cyclic uh, homology was uh, homology was not yet born, but uh, the theory of index theory for uh, for the aided manifold already at his hand. At uh, also at that time, the uh, work Lesk Pim uh, Pimzna work Lesk exact sequence all around that time proven. So that the participant was uh, quite, well, something big about to uh, occur. And uh, that's uh, born of the, the uh, non-commutative geometry. And the further uh, it went, uh, developed in them. OK, and uh, uh, type three factors analysis uh, was somewhat uh, calm down. This, uh, um, it was around just myself. The thinking, well, this uh, decomposition is unique, but the association of the so-called core was not unique. That uh, you have to choose the weight, etc. Flow of weight is canonical construction. That's uh, that's the factor. So that's fine. Uh, uh, at, uh, also. Uh, toward the end of the 70, new name came in. That's the Paul Jones. Uh, okay, but well, the main attention is the shifted from structure theory of the factor of type uh, three to the okay. The what uh, the item brought into the field is uh, this one parameter of the motion. And also that the scale, trace scaling one parameter of the morphism. And uh, you need to work on one of this, those other morphisms. And uh, Alan started uh, the classifying single order morphism on the injective factors. And he succeeded. And that theory uh, was uh, taken up by Bon Jones, and he uh, did it for finite group. Well, this two one factor, FD factor, possibly, I don't know if we have a time to go into that one. But in any case, uh, Bon Jones worked on that one in his thesis in the, toward the end of the 70. And Okunyono took up that to the amenable group. So group action, uh, particularly discrete group, amen, uh, amenable group action, on a factor come into the picture. And uh, I picked up that one. And uh, through this uh, 80s, I uh, continued to work on that. But there's one episode, which is, uh, I think, uh, worth remembering, was the bone subfactor theory And uh, no, that was uh, uh, one eighty two, but uh, actually florist eighty four. Uh, now eighty four eighty five. Okay, there was a uh, Mosley mathematical research. Uh, uh, no, mathematical science research institute MSRI in Berkeley was born in 82 or 83, yeah, I think 82 or 82, and 83 was the first year, the world operation 83. And the 84, 85 is the second year project of Mathematical Science Research Institute, Berkeley. Now, at that time, okay, uh, the institute already existed in uh, Princeton, and also another one is uh, Milwaukee, the upright uh, of the PDE type. And 
Berkeley is full-fledged uh, institute uh, encouraging the uh, communication among mathematicians, etc. So, but there was uh, some objection to do that to, for that name because uh, the, uh, uh, the fund, the science fund, is limited. That it's a fixed one. So it is uh, quite substantial portion is has to be taken to the Muslim MSRI. So there was some open objection for the research institute. So, uh, but uh, that anyway, government de uh, decided to go on. When, uh, so with that create uh, objection. Research Institute has to choose a topic very carefully, and they did. Uh, they chose the, uh, the topics carefully, and there were one is operator algebra for the second year project, and also another is low dimensional topology. The reason, okay, the both fields are very respected. Field, okay, low dimension is that okay, Poincare conjecture is uh, something on the horizon, and the operator algebra is with around, etc., that's coming into uh, the fashionable. But at the same time, why is the low dimension, dimension three, four? Infinite dimension, non commutative analysis of operator algebra, non commutative geometry, intersection must be empty. So that the union is the, uh, as wide as possible. That was the reason behind the choosing uh, row dimensional topology and operator algebra as the main major topic of this 784, 85 top. Everybody is laughing, as a, you know, those who know what happened to the operator algebra, the row dimensional topology, not theory. Vaughan Jones. That's a so-called Jones relation. Or, uh, that's uh, very closely related to the braid group generator's relation. And he was trying to connect the knot theory and uh, subfactor theory. I know that she's my close friend. And he telephoned me in, in May saying, Oh, so finally I succeeded to uh, produce a new not invariant, not uh, in the uh, uh, Alexander polynomials. So that's a new polynomials. That was in May. Oh, that's a congratulation. And I telephoned to the deputy director, uh, Kirby Moore, who was uh, my friend too. Carl? My dear fellow, uh, uh, the Von Jones proved that the uh, new not invariant through his subfactor theory. Calvin, Carl was uh, what wordless, complete. Well, it's the, uh, so they thought that the intersection empty, but it was uh, they discovered that the intersection very very big in, uh, in the no, no theory through two one factor theory, and then in the seven eighty four summer the, uh, there's another summer school in uh, New Hampshire. There's a uh, Okuniano. Uh, uh, well, that was organized by then Susan Montgomery and Mark Rifo. And uh, Von Jones, Okunano among participants. And uh, Adrian was another very uh, brilliant man, absorbed the Von theory very quickly at the site of the New Hampshire in the three week period, long enough for him. At the end, she learned about the uh, North no theory. Uh, the first, uh, she was reading the net uh, the, to speak. Uh, I don't know the author, that was not. And she produced uh, uh, another new two-variable invariant. And uh, that's the boss. Uh, then, uh, of course, the uh, North theorist was uh, stimulated by, by Vaughan's discovery. And uh, they started to produce now the Humphrey polynomials, 
the two variables not invariant. And then they joined in uh, 84 in complete and, and uh, Berkeley. And that's a very exciting year for road, uh, unthinkable communication between road dimension topologists and operator algebra. It's the learning altogether. The, the technique is so different and the field and uh, the, the training were very different. But uh, that's very interesting one year. I was among uh, the program committee, so I really enjoyed And I tried. What I did is try to reduce the number of talks as few as possible. So otherwise, the, we were just busy talking each other that no, nothing is done. So the, 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 and the collaboration went very nicely. Anyway, both sides are very excited. But here, I think it's very quite a bit of the uh, lesson we can learn from that experience. Uh, at least to my mind, the prediction in uh, mathematical science is uh, the, 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 the you, you cannot predict the future. You see that uh, for the, pro, uh, the committee who suggested the two title was consist of a brilliant mathematician, the, the, the field medalist or national academy members and so forth, but they didn't see the potential overlap of the two fields. Luckily. <laughs> But the, so the, when you uh, see this, how to uh, back up the research area or the, to finance the research activity is, uh, OK, the project is one thing, but uh, there are so many deep uh, discoveries going on beside the project. So you have to prepare for the unpredictable uh, development uh, outside of any project. Okay. So that means that the mathematical science, you have to have a balance between the, the project type and the non-project type. Basic, the, the support for the basic science is uh, very uh, quite something, you know, that the government wants to have a project because it's very easy to convince a politician that they send such a, such a pro project. If you have succeed this one, that's very easy. But that is a trap for. And um, uh, I, we want to see the more balanced support of mathematical, uh, well, the mathematical science, well, basic science. Particularly. Well, of course, it, if you, well, I have spoken this to the uh, Buchholz, uh, the German mathematical physicist. He smiled at me. <coughs> and uh, I spoke to him in the Kyoto late 80s, but said, oh, yes, if you are all the time project oriented, Masamichi, maybe we are building a huge steam engine, steam locomotive of the, uh, uh, and uh, not about the Japanese bullet train, but, but uh, uh, the, that, uh, that was his reply. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, any case, that was uh, uh, 84. And well, let's skip uh, to this. Uh, uh, to the, uh, the 90, that um, the, uh, uh, the my uh, former student Tony Falcon found a way to have a canonical construction of a core, and that way is now uh, that is our, my target of my series of lecture here today. Uh, the, this time, yeah. I think that's maybe this. Uh, yeah.